practice some pancakes. As always, I'm your host, Coleman Hodges. If you haven't already, don't forget to like this video, leave a comment in the section below, and subscribe to Swim Swam News on YouTube. Today, I am in Charlottesville, Virginia, for the Charlottesville natives, or those of you familiar with the area. I was going to go to the Heilman family recommended Bodo's Bagels, which is a local staple here, but I went to two different Bodo's locations. The lines at both were out the door, and I have a timetable to keep this morning. So unfortunately, I had to go to plan C, which is Greenberry Coffee Co., where I'm at right now. It is a lovely little coffee spot. They have breakfast burritos. I got the veggie, as well as this beauty, Nitro Cold Brew, people. I am about to get caffeinated. That is one heck of a breakfast burrito. In lieu of bagels, 10 out of 10 plan C. This morning, we went to a very, very special practice here in Charlottesville at the Piedmont YMCA. University of Virginia's Ken Ona, who is the department chair of mathematics at the University of Virginia, has been helping out UVA's swim team for quite some time now. Ken's son, Sage Ono, was actually a swimmer and team captain at Emory, where he started his work with swimming, which included Emory standout Andrew Wilson, as well as UGA's Maddie Locus. I had been in contact with Ken for quite some time, and he was kind enough to invite me to one of these sessions. Today's workout featured three swimmers, Cavalier Aquatic standout Thomas Heilman, rising junior at Emory, Nick Goody, and number six recruit in the class of 2022, incoming UVA freshman, Sebastian Surgile. I was excited to see Ken's process firsthand, and it did not disappoint. Take a look. A number of years ago, I was uh, at a conference in Oslo, Norway, where the Abel Prize was given out. The Abel Prize, think, think Nobel Prize in mathematics, it's a very big thing. And I met mathematicians who worked with the Norwegian cross-country ski team uh, around the time when they swept all the cross-country ski medals in the Olympics. We started chatting, I knew nothing about cross-country skiing, but they started sharing with, with me the things that they did to perfect the execution of all of the various disciplines in cross-country skiing. I started reading some of their papers, a couple emails, and then as an experiment, we decided let's see if we can replicate some of that in the swimming pool. We do a lot of back-end preparation for a test like this. For every single swimmer we do, no two swimmer will do the exact same sequence of tests because our goal is to figure out what is the best way to swim for them given their physical capabilities, how they race, given their tendencies, how they breathe, their stroke counts, their cadence during their underwaters, how they approach a turn, how they do a start. These are all different for every everyone and we're trying to figure out what is the best way to trade off drag versus propulsion for each and every individual. comes at it from an extremely analytical background and standpoint. Uh, he, he's he's going to measure the numbers, the small pieces that the human eye doesn't always catch. At, at a certain level, when you're trying to cut tens, hundreds, little bits of feedback like that can go a long way in helping us analyze not only technique, but how they race, how they perform. I know that we took a lot of that data back in December and applied it to Thomas's training over the last seven or eight months. So it's not only an opportunity for him to get better in maybe his best events or primary strokes, it's also a lot of really good data on areas where uh, his opportunities for growth and improvement uh, in order to better build a, a swimmer, not only now, but for years to come. Thank you, Mark. After we got the videos back, we kind of assessed the, my stroke and where what there was 
places for improvement. There's a couple couple things in each stroke. They seem simple, but they're once you actually get in the water and you try to fix them, there's multiple parts that go into them. So there's been a couple things in each stroke that we've kind of been working on the last the last few few months. We tested Thomas in December once before and I have followed his progress throughout the entire, you know, short course championships, international team trials. We have very detailed breakdowns with the distance where he's breaking out at, the, his tempo, how he's breathing on the left, how he's breathing on the right, the kick counts, the stroke counts, the timing between every single stroke. All of his tendencies help me understand how a swimmer mechanically swims, not only from a visual point of view from an underwater camera and overwater camera, but understand how their accelerative events impact their swim and how that video and the hydrodynamics or the fluid dynamics work together. So we measure probably everything you could possibly think would be important in swimming through a combination of uh, accelerometer and gyroscope measurements, our high definition video camera system, and then it's many hours of analysis. Please don't think that we're just doing, um, we're not just doing data science. We take each swimmer in their individual events and consider it as a, a master's thesis problem, mm -hmm. right? How do you swim this five yards faster? How do you swim this five yards faster? How do we know that the angle of, 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 of you know, of the various strokes or the angles off the wall are perfect for you, keeping in mind that there's no one way to make someone uh, an optimal swimmer. You have to really work with the individual. I have known Professor Ono for a while. I swam with his son on Emory uh, my freshman year, who's actually my captain, Sage Ono. Um, so I've known the family for a while, and at Nationals I spoke to him, and he said he had an opportunity over the summer, and just invited me over. Hey, come on! I didn't really have expectations because I didn't know what to expect, but obviously Professor Ono is so qualified in this and he's, he's done it before and you can see the results, so I was excited definitely. I feel like Professor Ono is looking at swimming in a completely new lens and I think that's what you need to progress the sport. So I just, I'm hoping to learn what I'm doing wrong, how to improve it, and also just, just like see where the sport's going because I mean five years ago I was a club swimmer and something like this like I would never this wouldn't even cross my mind um, so I'm excited to see how to apply the science and the data to my stroke and see how that improves it I really thought we were just gonna work on kind of technique and they got to kind of show me how to swim again how to refill and everything but really it was just swimming how you normally do, and then they're gonna go and analyze and do all the math stuff that I have no idea how to do. And then in a couple weeks, they're gonna send me a report of, oh, you, you didn't do X, Y, Z, work on these things, and um, over the course of next season, I'll be able to work on them. Hey, come on! Go! It was really fun, because I don't get to do stuff like this often. Um, just a lot of fast, sprinty stuff. That's my Atlanta. We do mainly mid-distance training, a little bit of distance. So this is fun practice for me for sure. Hey, come on! Go! sets us apart is that because we conduct many tests um, for the various strokes, we also have the ability to retest athletes later to see improvement and see if our recommendations make sense. And because of that, it means that we're often in a position to make strong predictions. And, uh, you know, when Paige Madden qualified for the Olympics swimming a 403 in the 400 meters, I knew months before if she did the perfect race, if everything really worked, she was going to go 403, which was effectively a six second drop. How did we know that? 
Well, Paige, she was crushing the NCAA for a number of years, but this was a COVID period. And, uh, and because you only peak a few times a year, how do you really know what your best is going to be? So we, did, we devised a number of tests to failure that allowed us to predict 403, and she hit that on the spot. Two years ago, I remember talking to Alex Walsh. I said, I think we should be aiming for 207 in the 200 IM. Uh, at that time, it was in the midst of COVID. Our meeting was over Zoom. And I remember she, she was saying, do you really think I can go 207? I have it recorded, but I think you can go 207. You could open in a low 2750 uh, on the fly leg. And she just did that. She went 0207. So uh, a lot of it is predictive. And uh, the predictions are based on dampening out uh, inefficiencies that we may discover.